أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها بعدد ما أحاط به علمك اللهم كل وليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الرسول بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك وإن لم تفعل فما بلغت رسالته والله يعصمك من الناس آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم So we talked about prophethood and why we need prophets and what should we think about prophets and we should believe that they are infallible because they represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is inappropriate for someone who is not infallible to represent Allah who is infallible, who won't make any mistakes, who won't have any wrong decision. <clears throat> so after prophets, we must believe in imamat and a'imma alayhum as and why is that? First of all, it's the decision of Allah. Can we question Allah? Can we question Allah why He created me? Why He created me male or female? Why He created me in this era and not back in the era of prophets? Why you created me, let's say, black, white? I cannot question Allah. So the first answer that we can use for questions such as why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to appoint successors after he appointed prophets, because it's his will, it's his decision, it's his call. And Allah says, Clearly, and states in Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَرُ And your Lord creates whatever He wants and appoints whoever He likes. So why? It's His decision. We cannot question Him. We don't have the right to question Him. So that's a very ridiculous question. Because if you arise that question, you can arise one million questions or more. But then why he created, why he appointed, what's, what's behind that, why, I don't want. It's not about my call, it's, my, it's not my decision. It's his decision, his call. Then, the, another debate that comes. Who says that you Shia are the right sect? We can then bring proofs from Quran and narrations. From Quran such as, the verse that I just recited. Ya ayyuhal rasul, ballagh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa in lam taf'al fa ma ballaghta risalata. Oh, our messenger, convey the message. Otherwise, we won't consider you as a prophet who sent, who delivered all of our messages to the nation. What was that single most important message of the prophet? Let's think wisely. Let's think rationally. What can be a single must, most important message of the Prophet that if he doesn't deliver Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, won't consider him as his messenger. If somebody is not conveying your messages, not your messenger. Cannot be salat. Because this verse is in surat. Al-Ma'idah. And Surah Al-Ma'idah was one of the last surah that revealed to our Prophet So we can ask, we can ask ourselves, we can ask other sects. So what was that most important message? One of the most important message, messages of the Prophet that Allah wanted him to pass, to convey to his nation. Just think about it. It cannot be something simple about how you eat sheep, meat, how, I don't know, you perform wudu, how you pray, how you go to hajj, because all of 
those aspects were discussed before that. Salat was discussed, fasting was discussed, Hajj was discussed. And as a matter of fact, this verse was revealed to our Prophet ﷺ in his way back to Medina from Mecca after he finished Hajj. It was his last ritual with all Muslims when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while he was in his way back to Medina, revealed that single verse to him. So what was the message? Let's go to narrations. Narrations of both sects, Sunni and Shia, and try to find out about the message that Allah wanted our Prophet to pass, to convey, and wanted the nation to receive and to understand. That message is the imamat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Go to Sunni books and go to Shia books and see the interpretation of this verse. And you would find that the Prophet in Ghadir Khum, a place distance from Mecca by 220 kilometers, if I'm not mistaken, I've been to Al Ghadir that Ghadir al-Khum between that, those two hills or mountains. Very nice place. He stopped, the Prophet stopped, and gathered all Muslims who were with him in Hajj. And they were 100K, 100,000 Muslims who did the ritual of Hajj with our Prophet Wasallam. He stopped them there for three days and three nights. When they gathered, that was a very, very sensitive spot where everyone has to pass that spot to go and split to go to reach their cities. Okay, He stopped them and he conveyed a single message. He told everyone that Allah ordered me to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, as my successor and as his successor. And the very famous narration that we all know, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah. Allahumma wali man wala, wa adi man aada. That whoever, take, whoever takes me as his master, should and must take Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib as his master as well. So whatever power Allah gave to me to be your ruler, Ali ibn Abi Talib will have the same power upon you. And that's called wilaya. Man kuntu alastu, the Prophet said, alastu awla bil mu'mini min anfusihim. Am I not someone who have more power on people than them having that power on themselves. Let me give you an example. So if the Prophet divorces my wife, even if I don't like that, that will occur. If he marries someone to somebody else, even if that person doesn't want, that will occur. This is marriage and divorce. If he sells my home, my home would be sold, even if I don't like that. This is called awlawiyah. He has more power than myself and my properties than myself. So the Prophet asked people, pilgrims, Alastu awla bil min anfusihim? You consider me, have more power on yourselves? Then yourself, on yourself. They said, yes. Then the Prophet said, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah. Then you have to consider Ali ibn Abi Talib as your mawla, as you consider me as your mawla. So the first way to know that, that the Prophet appointed Ali ibn Abi Talib are verses and narrations that talk about the appointment, how the Prophet appointed Ali ibn Abi Talib as his successor, such as Ayat al-Tabliq, such as Ayat al-Ruku' or Zakat so-called. When Allah states in Quran, 
Yeah. Who knows Ayat al Zakat? إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون. Your wali, the one who have wali on you, or the one who has wali on you, is Allah, the Prophet, and those who pay sadaq, pay zakat, why? While they are in the state of recruit. So it's about a specific occasion. When Ali ibn Abi Talib, our Imam, was praying. And in the state of Ruku', suddenly a beggar entered the mosque of the Prophet. And he started to beg people for some money. And no one gave him anything. And he was about to go out while Ali ibn Abi Talib, our commander, the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, was in the state of Ruku'. And that beggar said, oh Allah, I came to the mosque of your Prophet and no one helped me. Then Ali ibn Abi Talib pointed at him at his ring. Come and take my ring while he was in this state of ruku'ah. And the verse, if you go and read the translation of this verse, that your master is the one who gives zakat and sadaqah while he is in the state of ruku'ah. So this is, a, this is a specific story. Not a general story, a story about someone. And when you go and read history and narrations of both Sunni and Shia, you will find out that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the one who gave his ring to the beggar, to the poor person, while he was in the, in the state of Ruku'ah. And too many other verses. So this is the first proof. Verses and narrations, such as Hadith al-Thaqalain. Inni tarikun fikum al-Thaqalain, kitab Allah wa itrati ahla. Bayti. I'm leaving behind two valuable things. The book of Allah and my progeny. And if you take both of them, you won't be deviated from the right path. But if you take one of them, you will. You will get astray from the right path. So if you take both of them, you won't be deviated from the right path. Kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti. Ma intamassaktum bihima lan tadillu ba'di abad. So these, all of these narrations and all of these verses, we can categorize them under the first title, proofs that can prove the imamate of Imam Ali and his progeny. The second type is, is something that we cannot deny and no one can deny. When we see that Ahlul Bayt, the progeny of the Prophet, were the best people, the more knowledgeable people, the bravest people, the most generous people amongst the nation. So who should logically and rationally be the successor of the Prophet? The one who has knowledge or the one who doesn't? The one who is brave? and powerful or the one who runs away from the battlefields. The one who's generous or the one who's stingy. That's very obvious. And go and ask all sects, was Ali ibn Abi Talib more generous or the companions of the Prophet? Everyone, is his knowledge, if he's knowledgeable, should and must say, in accordance to history and narrations, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the most knowledgeable the most generous, the bravest person amongst the companions, amongst our Prophet's companions and our Prophet's relatives. That's it, full stop. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers someone else to, to be the successor of the Prophet, and instead of Ali ibn Abi Talib, then we can ask why? Because Allah is wise. If this person is better, than that person. So why you appointed somebody else and not this person? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't do an unwise action. So what is the wise action? That if he wants to appoint somebody that he would or he should appoint somebody who is what? More knowledgeable. And Allah says that in Quran. 
like, um, there is no comparison between knowledgeable people and ignorant people. So the one who says, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni, ask me before you lose me, should be followed, should be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the representative of the Prophet. Or the one who says, no, I'm not, I'm not a knowledgeable person. All Sunni narrates that Umar ibn al-Khattab said several times that I am not a knowledgeable person. Even ladies in their homes. Back then, ladies used to sit in homes. Too many ladies used to be illiterate. He said that even ladies who are sitting back in homes know more fiqh, have better understanding of religion than me. So how can we take somebody who is that ignorant and admits that he is an ignorant person, consider him as the successor of the Prophet while we have Ali ibn Abi Talib That's not wise. That's ridiculous. That's zulum, oppression. Oppression. And someone who is brave, go just to the Battle of Khaybar. You know the Khaybar? Have you, have you heard about the Battle of Khaybar? Very important battle. When the Prophet gave the flag to first Khalifa, so-called first Khalifa, Abu Bakr, and told him, go and take Khaybar. And he went and then returned to the Prophet and started to say, bringing excuses that I couldn't uh, gain the victory because my soldiers were coward. And they said, no, our leader was not that brave. The second day, the Prophet gave the flag to the second so-called Khalifa, Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he went and returned to the Prophet without being able to do anything. And his army accused him that this person is not brave. And he accused his army that they are not experienced. The third day, the Prophet said, لو أعطينا الراية غدا رجلا Tomorrow, I will give the flag to somebody who Allah loves him and he loves Allah and he will go and come back with victory. The third day, the Prophet gave the flag to Ali ibn Abi Talib and he went and Khaybar was confiscated, was taken by Ali ibn Abi Talib and he came back with victory. So, just think logically. Should I follow somebody who, who is the victor? Who brings victory to the Prophet and Islam? Or somebody who I don't know. At least he's not that strong. At least he's not that brave. I might say, okay, he wasn't strong, but he was brave. No, if he was brave, he had to get martyred. But he didn't. He didn't get martyred. So he wasn't brave even. He was chicken. Correct? Wasn't he? Probably he, came, he went back to the Prophet with a voice of chicken, just to save himself. Okay, let's be logical. Who should we follow? Should we follow chickens or lions of Allah? Ali ibn Abi Talib is the lion of Allah. Asadullah wa asadu Rasulah. The lion of the Prophet. Or should we follow chickens? It's up to you. We're not going to force you, but it's up to you. Be logical. Be rational. Be with braves. Be with knowledgeable. Be with those who pray 1,000 rak'ah every day, like Ali ibn Abi Talib. He used to pray 1,000 rak'ah every day. He used to say, ask me before you lose me. Saluni qabla an tafqidun. Be with Ali ibn Abi Talib. You want to be with Ali ibn Abi Talib? Brother, sister? Or you want to be with Amr ibn al-Khattab? What? With Ali ibn Abi Talib? Definitely. Say labbaik ya Ali. What about you? You want to be with Lady Fatima or the Aisha? It's up to you. It's up to you. It's your decision, your call. But be logical. If I want to be logical, rational, I would stand with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because too many verses praises, praise him. Too many historians praise him. And too many narrations praise Ali ibn Abi Talib compared to all other companions of the Prophet. No one who is decent is able to say one thing. 
that Ali ibn Abi Talib was in the nation and somebody else was more knowledgeable than Ali ibn Abi Talib. No one can say that. Even Sunnis. Even companions of the Prophet. As a matter of fact, the first call, the first so-called Khalifa said, Aqiluni, Aqiluni. Okay, come and break your allegiance that you gave to me. I'm not the best while you have Ali ibn Abi Talib amongst you. Of course, he didn't mean that. They didn't want to give the successorship to Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was playing politics. However, we will consider his admits and confess that Ali ibn Abi Talib is better than him. So if you confess and if you admit that Ali ibn Abi Talib is better than you, do you think that we are sheep to come and follow you and leave Ali ibn Abi Talib? We are not. We're not going to be donkey. We are wise creature. We have to use our intellect, our aql, our wisdom. And our wisdom and intellect and aql lead us to Ali ibn Abi Talib and not other, uh, other person. No one but Ali ibn Abi Talib. The one who Jibreel shouted between heaven and earth and said لا فتا إلا علي لا سيف إلا ذو الفقار no brave but Ali ibn Abi Talib no warrior but Ali ibn Abi Talib and no sword but the sword of the fiqar I will be following that person and not any other person so if you go to our religion and our sect Shiaism you would see and you would find it how strong it is how steady it is, how firm is our faith and sect and religion. How strong it is. So of course, we're not going to be like those who don't want to follow Ahlul Bayt In other words, Shiaism is the right sect. And is the sect that should be followed, and not any other sect. Thank you very much. Hada wa alhamdulillah, Rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. You can prepare yourself for salat.